All right, we didn't go too much into the book of Hosea. We are going to when I return to the other series. If you do and look at it on your own time, which I highly suggest you do, you're going to find out that Hosea is prophesizing about the future estate of the Ephraimites and what the Ephraimites have done to the lead of northern Israel. So you'll find out that this verse is exclusively talking about Ephraim. Listen closely. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. The first thing that my long-term listeners are going to see here is that we see, once again, the two separate houses, the two different types of God that are being depicted in the Bible. We get this one which requires this covenant, that requires this law that you must obey, and that anybody that do, don't do that, he's coming down on you with anger, wrath, and vengeance. And the one that he's going to come up against is being called this house of the Lord. Now, that's us. That's the believers in Jesus Christ, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. Because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Well, we know that Ephraim is the one symbolically, nationally, that is now upholding these laws, these laws of punishment by force that are dictated by the God of this earth. And we know that the Ephraimites, and we see our own military, the Ephraimite English United States military, symbolic English, because they were the first ones that colonized this country. They are the ones that are forcing the observance of these expanded ideological Ephraimite laws. So anybody that are not bowing to the knee of this Ephraimite subjugation into this new world order, we're seeing what's happening with them. And that's exactly what's going to take place with those after the new world order, after the second cup, when we begin to see our religious freedoms are going to be taken from us. And then if we don't turn over allegiance to their authority and to their form of deity, then they themselves have a plan for us that ain't too pretty. And that's exactly what we're going to see this document say on the $5 bill. So I'm setting the trumpet to the mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, the believers in Jesus Christ, because they have trans transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. Well, that, of course, is going to be false Israel, and then all of this sacrifice, persecution, and idol worship of which they themselves have suffered. And, of course, none of us are down with that. Easy to see. There's our first connection to Ephraim and the eagle is coming up against us in the New World Order, and then trying to obviously stop our religious freedoms and at the same time thin the population of the world. It's all there. So we have the next connection is going to be coming to Isaiah chapter 34 verse 15. This one is entitled the day of the Lord Armageddon and it's going to give us that flip-flop between Nesher meaning both vulture and eagle. If you look it up you'll see it's there. This is going to be who rules in the kingdom age. In essence, that's what this verse is talking about, starting at verse 15. There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay, and hatch, and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures, that's what this says, but we can interchange vultures with eagles. There shall the eagle also be gathered, every one with her mate. Now, we want to remember this because this is going to tie up in a big way. This thing fits together like a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. I'm just going to clue you in right now what we just talked about. This is the kingdom age, and the book of Isaiah is referring that these birds of heaven are going to be the ones that are going to inherit the earth. In this case, they have put vultures in, which could easily connect us back to the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, of which Ephraimites are giving allegiance to, which is why it's no accident where the eagle can be switched between the Egyptian vulture or the modern-day Ephraimite symbol of the eagle, that the Hebrew translation will translate correctly back to vulture, which will bring us back to the Egyptian mystery religion. And then we're going to find out this connection to the gathering is going to be back to the words of Jesus Christ. I'll be back.